The International Committee of the Red Cross is playing a vital role in the release and transfer of the hostages and prisoners today. They're a neutral intermediary, not been involved in the negotiations themselves, but they help with the exchanges. And we've reached the head of the ICRC delegation in New York, Letitia Courtois. She's also the ICRC's permanent observer to the United Nations. Letitia, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. You've helped with this important uh, release of hostages and Palestinians who were in Israeli custody. What are you hearing from your ICRC colleagues about the conditions of the hostages released today? How are they? Well, first, let me start by saying how relieved we are that the, this operation, which was very complicated and, and complex on, on happening on multi fronts happened uh, smoothly. It really is a good first signal uh, to moving uh, forward in the coming days. Um, now we can imagine the conditions of the hostages. Um, there were kids, uh, uh, grandparents, uh, elderly, uh, detained for a few weeks uh, in condition probably very, very basic in the middle of a war zone uh, without contact with their families and without or with limited access to medical care. So I think it's important to uh, to give them a time to, to reconnect, um, to be uh, properly checked as well, and above all, to be reunited with their loved ones. How worried are you that this may not hold? I mean, it's taken a, a, a lot of work to get to this point. Um, there's not a lot of trust, obviously, between the parties, and, and it's a fragile agreement, I, I think it's safe to say. Uh, what, what, What's your level of anxiety about the ability of this to, to be seen through to its conclusion? Uh, we obviously are anxious. Um, it is obviously a holding to, to a thread, but we need to make this thread stronger and stronger. Uh, this operation is, is actually contributing to the trust building that, that needs to happen to move forward in, in these that are more complex, more complicated, that will include as well more uh, compromises, and those are more urgent than ever. You, we, we hear uh, about the disastrous situation in Gaza, uh, the immense needs of the population that is confronted with, with massive needs, continued host hostilities, and, and very, very little safety to be able to, to even go out in the market, find water, food for their beloved ones, and not even uh, mentioning the, the lack of medical access for an increasingly number of people injured that really require attentive and, and really important medical support to take care of their injuries, which are very complex to address. So we really need everyone to play its part to make this um, uh, agreement continue and extend uh, to the necessary possible. It, it had been reported uh, that as part of this agreement, the uh, International Committee of the Red Cross would be given access to the hostages who were not included in this swap arrangement that you might get to see and check on the condition of some of the people that are being held by the various groups inside Gaza. Is that still going to happen? Can you give us a sense of when that might happen if it is still on the agenda? Well, as, as we mentioned, that this is a step-by-step -step, uh, agreement. Uh, this first day was critical. It was, it was really important that it, ha it happens uh, in the smoothest way. Uh, the ICRC has been calling from the onset to have access to uh, those uh, held hostages, and we will continue to call for that access, to call as well for the families to have proof of lives of their loved ones and to be able to, to communicate with them. So we'll continue to uh, push uh, and, and make this uh, happen. At least this is our intention. Okay, but there is no formal agreement at this point with a timeline uh, to allow for that to happen. Am I correct in understanding that, Letitia? I don't have the details on, on that particular element, but you can be sure that this is something we will push one way or another. No, understandably so. I, I wonder, I, I don't like reducing human beings to, to ratios, you know, and, and doing math with them, but we were told this would be 50 hostages for 150 uh, Palestinians. And today we saw uh, 24 uh, uh, hostages released, uh, 13 Israeli, 11 other nationals, and, and 39 Palestinians. Uh, can you shed any uh, light on why those numbers in, in those proportions uh, were released today and how this might play out over the coming days? I mean, the, the agreement that the parties um, have reached, as you mentioned, uh, is not something that the RCRC has been negotiating. So it, it is really up to the to the wearing parties to 
to put those numbers and agree on those numbers uh, that are on the table. Um, on the one hand, we have 239 people that need uh, to get uh, released immediately and unconditionally. And on the other side, you have a number of people being detained uh, that we uh, want to continue visiting as well, uh, as long as necessary to ensure as well that uh, we are there for them in those uh, moments and they can also be reunited with their family when the time comes. So we really hope that whatever deal the, the warring parties are uh, agreeing to, it, it includes the largest number of people. You, you talked about the humanitarian needs inside Gaza. Obviously, this, this uh, uh, temporary pause, if should it hold, is an opportunity for aid groups to get inside to, to help alleviate some of the difficulties in there. But um, Israel's defense minister has vowed that when these four days are up, they're going to continue the fight forcefully and expect at least two more months of battle. What's your response to that? Can the people of Gaza, the civilian population of Gaza, endure two more months of this? It, it is very difficult to uh, to imagine those two months ahead. But I think what is important is that this is not just an opportunity. This is a necessity to have humanitarian uh, assistance scaling up. Uh, the needs are so huge. Uh, we're heading to winter. The weather is changing. The needs are increasing uh, for those that are surviving, really surviving in the Gaza Strip right now. And this humanitarian assistance needs to continue entering to the right scale and scope, regardless of the hostilities continuing. This is an obligation under international humanitarian law. It needs to happen. So we really are hopeful that today's um, initiation of of a larger uh, humanitarian pipeline continues uh, and increasing by the day. We are seeing reports that uh, more than 100 trucks have gotten in today and aid is starting to flow. What are you hearing in terms of what aid workers who are able to get in after struggling to get in are, are reporting in terms of what they're seeing from inside Gaza on the first day of this, um, of this pause? But we have had uh, colleagues entering into Gaza. Uh, unfortunately, they're also joining colleagues that are exhausted. Mm. Uh, they also have been victims of the overall uh, war. I mean, we, we lost a colleague a few days ago uh, with who, who died with his own family as well. So this is this is a tragic situation where our colleagues are, um, are faced with. And, and we really need to, to scale up uh, the, the uh, pipelines, but also the human capacity to, to distribute this assistance, to be where we need to be in all places that the civilians are uh, direly uh, needing humanitarian assistance. And for that, we need also to have the capacity to scale up uh, on that file. So really, I, I hope we, we manage to, um, to engage with a sufficient number of staff uh, in uh, safe conditions, obviously, uh, to make sure they can provide the support that the Gazans need directly. Leticia Courtois, head of the New York delegation uh, of the International Committee of the Red Cross, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.